This is going to be verse by verse of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And we're going to look at the subject of suffering. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus and to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So notice these men did some suffering for the Lord. Paul himself says in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more, and labors more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prisons more frequent, and deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of war robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. So Paul suffered... Silvanus, which is Silas, was in prison with Paul, so he did some suffering. Timothy was called a fellow worker and servant of Christ with Paul. So these men experienced suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ. So verse 1, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus and to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So the church of the Thessalonians is a local group of believers. You have the church in the Bible, which is made up of every born-again believer. And then you have churches, which is local assemblies of born-again believers. And a church that is doing good is going to suffer many times. In Revelation 2.10, the Lord tells the church of Smyrna to fear None of those things which thou shalt suffer. So, verse 1, Paul, Silvanus, and Timotheus, and to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the phrase, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're saved, then you are in Jesus Christ. You are part of the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians twelve thirteen says, For by one Spirit... Are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit? So you're part of the body, which is the church. Second Thessalonians 1, 2 Thessalonians 1.2 Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is your daily dose and grace Daily dose of growth of grace that you need. You need to be growing in grace every day. You need to have peace from God every day. Second Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the peace in verse 2 here is the peace of God that comes along with walking with God. Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So, in suffering, you can still have grace, and you can still have peace. And many people go through hard times, but there is always the peace that passes all understanding because they are know they are saved, and they know they're going to heaven. And if all you have is this life, then you won't have peace. If all you have is temporal, material things then you won't have peace when suffering comes. Paul had more than that. He said, I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. He said, he talked about being absent from the body and being present with the Lord. He knew where he was going, so he had peace for that reason. Now, verse 3, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth so paul is very thankful he said himself in 
2 Timothy 3 and verse 2 that being unthankful was a last day son. He didn't want to be a part of that, so he thanked God always. He commends the Thessalonians because their faith groweth exceedingly. Suffering and leaning on the Lord during hard times will cause your faith to grow. Romans 5 3 through 4 says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. The more suffering you go through, the more patience you're going to get, the more experience you're going to get. But he says in verse 3 in Second Thessalonians 1, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. And the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. The charity the Thessalonians showed each other shows they could suffer together. This is why you don't want to be a recluse or a lone ranger or a one-man army. Suffering is easier when you have others to lean on. But charity, this charity they have, has to do with their love for their fellow Christians, their love for each other. Now, verse 4, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. So these Thessalonians are commended for enduring persecution and tribulation. Can you endure suffering? 2 Timothy 2, 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. A soldier... And the Lord's army should keep going through hard times. And when you keep going, you always come out better on the other side. The easier you have it in this life, the weaker you're going to get. The harder you have it, the tougher you will become. Endure persecutions, tribulations, hardness. And you'll come out just tough as steel, ready to take on anything that, that's in your way with the help of God. Now, verse 4 and 5, So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. So all of God's judgments are righteous. All of God's anger is righteous. And when we as Christians are going through bad things, it could also be because of sins, and this causes God to chasten us and give us persecutions and tribulations and suffering. And this is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Now verse 6 says, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So when you mess up and sin as a Christian, he can cause men to give you trouble. He can cause men to be thorns in your side, just like he raised up an adversary against Solomon when he forsook the Lord. But the men of the Lord will always get back up, most times. So the Bible says, a just man falleth seven times, but you got to get back up. Now, some Christians won't get back up, and they'll be defeated by the devil. But if you're saved and you're living like a just man, then you're going to get back up. And, you know, the Lord had to put you through those things maybe because of certain sin in your life. And he's using men to knock you down. He's using the adversary to knock you down. But God uses these men as a thorn in the flesh. But then it says it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So he repays them for causing you trouble. It's a, seen as a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Then it says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So not only is there going to be suffering for the Christian in this life, but there's also going to be suffering at the second coming. 
Notice it says, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what's going to happen at that second coming of Christ that's going to cause suffering? Well, in Isaiah 63 and verse 6, it says, And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Revelation 19.15 says, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So it's going to be a horrible time for the lost men on the earth. Revelation, or 2 Thessalonians 1, 7, says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Matthew twenty two thirty says, We shall be as the angels of God in heaven. We are going to be his mighty angels in the Lord's army. Possibly the church age saints will replace the sons of God, the fallen angels that fell. Now, Joel 2 gives a good description of the Lord's army. Some believe Joel 2 is describing the army of locusts, but I believe it's actually a reference to us coming back with Jesus and our glorified bodies. In Joel chapter 2, verse 4, it says, The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people and set in battle array. Before the, their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one on everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. That's the Lord's army coming back with him at the second coming. And that said the people are going to be much pained. There's going to be suffering at the second coming. All the suffering that went on with God's people throughout time, God repays them all back and causes them to suffer. Second Thessalonians 1 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Christ rejectors, the people that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, will suffer in flaming fire. And be put into a lake of fire. You don't want to suffer the wrath of Almighty God. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Second Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.9 Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So those... Same men will suffer fire in hell. So there's suffering for the Christian in this life. There's suffering at the second coming and there's suffering in hell and everlasting fire. Matthew twenty five forty one says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. At the great white throne, death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. Then you go out of the frying pan, and into the fire. So Second Thessalonians 1 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. There is punishment for sin. Romans 6 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, and the suffering is your punishment for not obeying the gospel. Many talk about the presence of the Lord in hell or the presence of the Lord not being in hell. But in hell you'll surely be in the presence of God's anger. The Bible says hell is where the anger of God is kindled. Revelation 14.10 says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. 
He's there. In Psalms 139.8 says, it says, If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Hell is separation from the presence of God's love, mercy, and grace, but not from his wrath and from his judgment. 2 Thessalonians 1.9 Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? Now verse 10, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. The phrase in that day refers to the day of the Lord, here to the second coming specifically. Now verse 11, Wherefore also we pray ours for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So God wants you to go through things here and do some suffering and do things for him to be counted worthy, not to, not to be worthy of salvation that was already settled when you believed the gospel, but be worthy of a crown, worthy of rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. He said the work of faith with power. And that's what gets you rewards. The work of faith is done with a sincere motive of wanting God to get the glory, not yourself and not someone else. Now, verse 12, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ glorified in you? Are you taking glory away? Are you getting the glory yourself and not him? But this has been some things about suffering. Christians are going to have suffering. Lost people are going to have suffering in this life just because this is a sin-cursed world. Christians aren't the only one that have it bad. The Bible says the way of transgressors is hard. So if you're a, tra if you're a sinner and you're lost in your sin, I mean, you're going to have a hard life. People are going to suffer at the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to suffer during the tribulation. There's suffering going on right now in hell. In the book of Jude, it talks about the angels that left their first estate and they're presently suffering the vengeance of eternal fire along with those people in Sodom and Gomorrah. There's a lot of suffering going on. You see it all over the place. Right now, someone is being murdered. Right now, someone is being tortured. Right now, someone is being raped. Right now, someone is having a car wreck. Someone is in extreme pain in a hospital somewhere. There's a lot of suffering going on. But when you're suffering, you may not be suffering right now. You may be feeling good right now. But when you're suffering, you're going to need someone to call on. You're going to need someone to help you through the suffering. And if you're not saved, then you don't have anybody to, that can truly help you through suffering. The doctors can only do so much, you know, police can only do so much, family can only do so much. You can need the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you're not saved, you don't have him. But Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Jesus Christ died, and he died for your sins, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're a sinner, and that's why you need a Savior. And Paul said in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So if you come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe the gospel, then you'll be saved. Quit relying on your own goodness to get you to heaven. Come to Jesus and rely on Him and what He did on the cross to be your payment for sin. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved.